and I'll juxtaposition to run technical support for things. And uh, try and deduce through status reports the problem with the Mixer website when this music is playing in my ears. What's important to note is that it's not my fault. <laughs> Nor is it the fault of my ISP, and that's what matters to me. At least that's my opinion on the matter. Close that stuff. Let's see if we can get back to the game here. It's like whenever I click out and want to do a thing with the keyboard, the control stop registering properly. Damn it. Oh boy, we're in this party mode. And we're dying. Good news, we made it back to that mode again. We did it quicker that time. That's good. Anyone who's having a zero sound issue, you can tell them to to refresh the page. Too much damage there towards the end. Son of a bitch. The themes. I didn't find the correct avenues. Alright.
Don't mind me while I take shit at the damage. Jeez. Uh-oh. That fucking asshole fucking robot participating in everything. Because I only wanted to be a part of the problem. Thanks. Damn! Glad I got an achievement for that. That's what I was going for, folks. The achievement.
The few tries. If anyone's having a problem with playback, you can right click on the video playback and click report a problem. And then, like, click whatever is best fitting for that. And it'll spit stats directly to uh, the folks at Mixer, including the stats for records. Of course, if you're not getting video playback at all, that's actually something where you have to contact them more directly. Certainly wouldn't be the first time that issue has existed on Mixer. Uh, a large problem uh, that's had is uh, due to playback uh, with the latest public ver or latest like official stable version of Chrome. And that's due to something that uh, Chrome changed in their more later versions. It's something that the Mixer staff has been working with Chrome to resolve. And in the Chrome Canary build, uh, it, I hear it tell it is more stable. All of these are mobile plants. Alright. The Queen System. Well, that happened. Glad it was so fucking easy for you, asshole. these alternating bursts. That's rude. I don't like this mode, Mom. as if I just did overkill there with that charge bit at the end. And all the hard work I did got nullified. What the fuck is this? Oh, this is not okay. You didn't want screen real estate, did you? Screen real estate's a crutch. No one would ever want that. Everyone hates crutches. Just look at how people treat disabled folk. Nope. We're not even gonna get that far this time. Took too much damage. I 
I wonder how you dodge all those red blasts that happen. Asking for a friend. Everything you ever wanted decided to piss you off this summer. a lot of damage lining up that cone. I don't think that was for the best. Alright, maybe it was. Took me fewer attempts than the last boss did. Where the fuck was that move? Where the fuck was that? <laughs> Why couldn't I do that? <laughs> that fucking reminded me of the typing of the dead boss, the, the phantom thing. You know, or just like the like the floating blue ball. I like Mort's and the different things. Also reminded me of like a human cell. Foreign object to check it. Hmm. Hmm. アグラは無限に分割されていく。Okay.
July 1st, AG 0010. The SDF makes a triumphant return to Earth. The Terran Coalition Council, fearing accusations of responsibility for the Felune War, takes core officers of the SDF, including Daniel O'Brien and Custy, as war criminals. July 15th, the SD officers in court are court martialed and sentenced to death. Sentenced to death. August 3rd, documents belonging to the late Meredith Seraf, Commodore of the Vanguard Fleet, leaked to the public. The Council's most hidden secrets go viral. November 26th, incarcerated SDF officers, and that could be an O, including Daniel O'Brien, are released by the Council's anti chairman contingent supported by the public. Every aspect of the political process enters gridlock. On December 7th next year, the, the Terran Coalition dissolves. The world is thrown into chaos over the redistribution of wealth and power. Redistribution of wealth and power, that sounds like Deus Ex. I feel like I've been there before.人は過去に縛られるものだ。悲しい記憶も美しい思い出も同じように今の判断を鈍らせる。分かってるって。将来ハゲても気にするなってことだろ。違う。クラートの背中を追うのも終わんのも。お前の自由という話だ。そうだな
right? Mouse, adjust camera. Yes, yes, the one time I need to let go of my controller and use my keyboard and mouse. Thank you. I love how it just says mouse, but it doesn't tell you how to do it. You have to figure it out on your own. Reminds me of like a, was it Widowmaker and Overwatch thing? Let's close that. That looks creepier. That does look cool.
Also zooming in like that actually ramped up my CPU. I suppose something I could have done to ease the, the transmission of data for the livestream uh, would have been to lower the game quality. I think I have it set to uh, its default high. Well, that's not blinding. Alright, what kind of artwork you got for us here? Ah, yes, the various stills that we saw. You can preview them all again. I don't think we will be previewing them all again. We'll overlook the prologue stuff again, at least. We just saw all this artwork, damn it. Okay, give me some in-game lore here. Teach me about what the fuck is going on here. I don't I don't need I don't need info on the characters. Alright, the Terran Coalition. Okay. Alright. Insect-like properties or marine components, sure. Reality alteration device to control the laws of physics from the inside of the space. Okay. You got a lot of weapons. Tell me about <laughs> this. Feels if that's really gonna help me. We got some geography though. Well, that's good. Okay. Okay. Sure, Roy. It's not easy to read over the uh, the background of uh, Fiona's image. I like how her weight is not existent.
I like how Grotto here is the only one with the dark background that makes it easier to read his text. Alright, let me read this one out loud. Grotto Nono is the president of GoCorp, a private military firm highly related highly rated in combat operation. He is the biological father of Theo and Esto. In the case of Roy Beckett, Grotto is a benefactor who saved Roy from poverty, though Grotto did it so out of curiosity and in an illegal way more than anything else. I wanted to read that so I could read that specific sentence. What the fuck does that mean? In the case of Roy Beckett, Grotto is a benefactor who saved Roy from poverty, though Grotto did so out of curiosity, and in an illegal way more than anything else. Okay. He is a man of remarkable genius, he manages his company with amazing success, yet still sees fit to participate in combat engagements outperforming a great many of his comrades. The name Grotto Nono carries a lot of weight in not only military fields, but other ones, much like the living legend himself. His wild and boisterous character attracts those around him, though he is not without his enemies. Moreover, in spite of his position, he has a bad habit of sleeping around and causing bar fights. Grotto's heroic tale ended during the initial attack on the mobile planet, but he was able to discover that with the right technology, an Earth-made blade could damage the Felune's undulation armor. <laughs> With this knowledge in hand, he was able to rescue Theo as Lucas and brought back a symptote to Earth, marking a major turning point in the war. And what we got? We have Hugo. Daniel O'Brien, Meredith Seraf, Seraf, and Diagra. I just noticed how the font down there in the bottom right corner that's being used for X. Interesting. Alright. So after after all that, I feel I did not mean to click on that, I feel as if I understand less about the game. Well that happened. That was an experience. Huh. Only took us 12 continues. Had to insert in a bunch of quarters. That's good. And we can pick up the game from selected chapters now. And we can even go from the highest difficulty we have unlocked now. We'd have to clear the easy difficulty in order to swap between chapters and easy. Because of course. Hmm. Well, I mean, this seems like a reasonable point to end it on. Well, I didn't mean to completely compose out the game entirely. Could have listened to the, the jingle some more, but yeah. Yeah, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. I reckon that was worth the four ninety nine just for the experience of it. Uh, besides, I did get a few more dollars for Anime Game Week. It's not bad. I don't think I'll ever play it again. <laughs> I think it I think the visuals and the sound and the music were were pretty good. You know, whole aesthetics of it. I think the it's one of the more enjoyable shoot 'em ups I've played. So there is that. It tries to have a story. It certainly is an anime story. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Which is fine. The story doesn't take 
it doesn't the game doesn't waste much of any time trying to fucking explain itself to you about why things are happening other than that things are happening and you need to save the fucking day look cool um game easy enough to control if i had an xbox 360 controller which is what like the default controller recommendation was i assume that would have controlled even better i had difficulty aiming the focus cone um but i do believe i could have controlled it with the keyboard and mouse I just so happen to have a PlayStation 2 controller that I connected through an adapter and picked it up instantly. So that was really cool. I didn't have to use like a joy to key thing. That was pretty nice. Uh, yeah. Gameplay on normal difficulty. I mean, we took 12 continues. Game was very generous with where it started us. Numerous checkpoints, so we didn't have to repeat entire levels. I thought the bosses had patterns that were recognizable, uh, particularly that Chapter 5 asymptote... Uh, hell, I already forgot the name of it. The giant fucking boss that we fucking blocked with, like, the fist of, and we destroyed parts of it, and it did, like, the twirly thing that we ended up disconnecting in during the middle. Like, yeah, that was, that was pretty neat. I don't regret it. I, uh, I got to experience it. And uh, if I enjoyed the genre more, I could see myself playing it more. It I wouldn't be opposed to even playing it again. You know, at least fiddling around with it more. In part because the aesthetics and the gameplay were pretty fun. I like that. I think it even would have been better for me had I been doing that full screen instead of in a window. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. For all the game, I think it's a good game. It's... It's just not so great a game that it can, like, reach across that boundary, like, the gulf of games that I don't enjoy. <laughs> and, like, pull me over to, like, wanting to keep playing. There's other games I'd rather play. But, yeah. I'm I'm glad I, uh, I put this on the list of games to experience. I'm glad I purchased it. Just for the sole purpose of playing it for Anime Game Week. It's pretty cool. No, there is no excuse for the gloom. Yeah. And game, you know, as is typical for like an arcade style like Quarter Muncher, it ended up not being that long either. Which I don't have a problem with either. The I the extra length would end up coming in, I imagine, like as you explored like harder difficulty modes or uh, or changed the settings in some fashion. Like, uh, there's a few folks who've been in chat, like Otaku Dash and Kupo Fire, uh, who uh, have more familiarity with the game than I do. Uh, are there difficulties beyond hard? Can you customize the difficulty or, like, changes to the game any further? I noticed that, like, I unlocked the Ash Debris that I could use from the very beginning. And I noticed that there were differences in the Mech Gundam robot things I was using. Like, the Ash Debris did have, like, the larger sword arc. Yeah, that's pretty enjoyable. I like that. No regrets about that at all. Aesthetic, graphics, gameplay, had voice acting. <laughs> if I was fluent in Japanese, I uh, imagine I could have caught snippets and understood more of like the plot events as they were occurring. It just the circumstance that I couldn't. I felt pretty good. That was enjoyable to play. I mean, it's... <laughs> I don't know about the content of the story, but then again, like, I don't think that you play Bullet Hell shoot 'em up to be entranced or captivated by the story. I think confusing's the right way to go there. It just ended up being mesmerizing. Like, what the fuck is going on? I don't regret having experienced that. I just leave it with more questions and answers. And maybe that's not such a bad thing, because that makes me more curious about the game. Ash to breathe. <laughs> huh? Game went pretty well. And uh, I think that'll reflect that in, in the videos of it, too. Not so much for the live streaming experience, but, uh... Yeah. It was pretty fun all around. I like it. Chalk that up to a victory. And uh, just ends up being like a bonus quirk of fate that uh, that uh, 
asked to breed uh, for as uh, short as it was ended up being today uh, due to all of the griff levels, the heavy storming, and uh, my sedation that happened today. Wasn't so bad. Yes, light. <laughs> <laughs> ended up being nice. Ended up being nice all around. Anyway, folks, I um, I uh, I will call the broadcast uh, as if for whatever reason you are somehow unfamiliar with the schedule, this or the situation. This is Anime Game Week. I am going to be broadcasting for the rest of this week, uh, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, uh, basically a little bit earlier than what we started, uh, and going to be going through a bunch of different other games. Uh, tomorrow is going to be Rock Robin, which is like another sort of management sim visual novel, uh, free from itch.io. I've uh, had my eye on it for some time, and I just never got around to playing it. And uh, I like the I like the look and uh, flavor of the game, and I'm interested in trying it. Then we have the oldest game on the list, which is the Silver Case, uh, which is more of a horror style game. Then we have Moe Curry, adorable plus tactical as RPG. <laughs> we have Chantalisa Tale of Two Sisters, uh, which is uh, made by Carpe Fulger, same folks behind Reseteer. And then to cap it all off, we'll have Valhalla, a cyberpunk bartender action. Yeah, I uh, for Anime Game Week, I wanted to explore a bunch of different games that I didn't know much about, and for a few of them, I did want to play more of. Like, unlike, like, Unholy Heights, for example, was a game that's definitely anime, but I already played quite a bit of that. You know, Valkyria Chronicles is something that Otaku Shout recommended, and I was like, people know quite a bit about Valkyria Chronicles. It's a good game. Like, I've seen it, there's definitely great value in it, but I want to tackle other things. <laughs> yeah, I, um... I, I like the games I've chosen, and if for whatever reason, like, there's a day where they don't, one of them doesn't work, I have substitutes uh, that I like as well. I, uh, there's certainly so many, like, Japanese-flavored games out there that, uh, even if I'm not into, like, anime writing and art style all that much, we can still find fun and enjoy. Anyway, folks, on a, uh, on a sentimental story note that uh, has anime tones to it, uh, it seems uh, that someone is broadcasting uh, tonight who uh, is playing a game that I've streamed before. And uh, I did find enjoyable oh, in some aspects and confusing in others. I've uh, shown her off before. I've hung out with her together. Uh, whenever we've done um, things together, like uh, Orwell, which was like a, a reading story with choices and consequences in it that I particularly enjoyed, and I went with her along that while she played it. I've joined her for a few other interactive things. She likes to play like tabletop games, like every Friday with a group. Uh, and she's currently playing the RPG Maker, the very sentimental story, the heartfelt and touching To the Moon. Um, with whose title song, When This World Is No More, The Moon Is All I See, and I'll Ask You To Fly Away With Me, I still hum every now and then. Like, and I have that on my computer, even if the game didn't end up impacting that much to me. To the moon. So, uh, I, I'm, she probably hasn't played the game before, so if you know about it, I would encourage you not to spoil. Uh, but I like her, and this game is certainly not a bad one. <laughs> Wasn't... <laughs> It frustrated me, it even had like some of those puzzle segments, but uh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Very, very heartfelt. So maybe if you want a good cry, uh, you can join along with that. So we're going to be raiding her, I feel. Uh, as soon as I end this broadcast, I'm going to host her at there. And whenever I stop the broadcast, I'm going to host her. And whenever I do that, go ahead and put that in her chat one time after I host her. Look out for the host so that we can all do it together. And uh, maybe see if you're into To The Moon. Take care, folks. I'll talk to you later in future Let's Get On With It endeavors. I hope you all have a good night. Bye now.